During our class videos, you may hear our poets and playwrights use terms that are new to you. We have created a list of key terms and definitions that you can refer to at any point during our video lectures. This list is available on the Videos and Readings class page, where you can read it or download it as a PDF. If you would like to find and review these terms while you watch each class video, you can stop this video, go back to the Videos and Readings class page, and download the PDF. There you can play this video in each of the following class videos. If you have any questions about these terms, we encourage you to ask your teaching team in the weekly class discussions. Matthew, Matthew McGuire is a multidisciplinary theater artist. He has won an Obie Award for Acting and an Obie Award for Direction, and numerous fellowships and commissions. His plays include The Tower, Phaedra, Throw and Bones, The Memory of Theater of Giulio Camillo, and others. He is the director of the theater program at Fordham College at Lincoln Center, and has taught at Emory University, the University of Iowa, and Yale University. My name is Matthew McGuire, and I've been making theater since uh, 1977. I am the director of the theater program at Fordham College at Lincoln Center, and I'm also the co-director of the MFA in playwriting program that Fordham has in alliance with Primary Stages. I started out as an experimental theater artist and after about uh, 20 years I got engaged in writing linear work. So I became a zealot convert. To <laughs> so I'm going to talk about uh, how one writes a play and especially interested in writing plays that might affect uh, social change to make, to increase social justice in the world. The first thing that I like to do when I start writing is to ask, what is my urgent question right now? What's gnawing on me? What keeps me up at night? Uh, there's a long history of, of great writers talking about uh, the question is the thing that propels. Uh, Henrik Ibsen said, the task is only to question. Uh, the great photographer, Diane Arbus, said her favorite thing is to go where she doesn't know where she is. So it's, it's important to go into the unknown. So I... One of my favorite exercises is called Cascade of Questions. You start off with a simple question, and you let that lead to another question, and another question, and another question, and you fill pages and pages with questions that are cascading like a waterfall. Then, you take one of those questions, and you, you put it in a character. Literally, put that question in your character's mouth. That's her opening line. And you give her someone to talk to, someone who's not easy to talk to, somebody who's not going to give her an easy answer, somebody who resists, uh, somebody who is uh, absolutely against asking such a question. And you let them hammer away at one another until uh, the drama of that scene literally is embodying your question. And the, and the idea is not to get to a place where you've answered the question, but similar to what scientists would do, as soon as you've excavated down to a certain level, you want to go further. Okay, now you've understood that an, an atom is made of a proton and neutrons. Okay, now what? What else is in there? So you're never satisfied. You're always moving forward. So a play is not an essay. It's allowing the audience to engage with you in an active pursuit that they can see this really is urgent for you. So if, you're, if your question has to do with social justice, and I, I want to refer to a piece that I saw last night. It's difficult to pronounce, so it's called uh, Pelota by Mark Bamuti Joseph. It was at the Hancher Auditorium here in Iowa City. He is 
writing about, I sh- well, he's, he's more than writing. He's absolutely writing, but he's also uh, choreographing, and he's also creating a visual score. He's also dance, a very heavily dance piece. So he's making a multimedia piece, which, and it's about Black Lives Matter. It's about how to keep his son who is, uh, you know, he's, a, he's of a Haitian lineage, so his son is black, and how is he going to keep his son alive? Um, what he's done, he's been in love with soccer all of his life, so he's, he's it's partly about the joy of soccer, and it's also the freedom from fear. And he's, he's asking a question that the play doesn't answer. How, how do we survive? And how do we use the joy of, of play, in this case soccer, or, or music, or the dance, uh, to help us find the tools to stay alive. Um, another e- experimental piece that I saw recently that I think uh, would be an important tool for moving social change forward is a piece by an English company called Punch Drunk. Uh, They brought their piece Sleep No More to New York. And it's it's an immersive version of Macbeth. They've taken five stories of an old building and they've turned it into a kind of Hitchcockian hotel. And the audience uh, all wear white masks and you can follow the performance anywhere in the building. And the performance is happening in all the rooms of the building at the same time. So in terms of, this is such an act of questioning because the audience is, is being led to the reality. I can go anywhere I want. So where do I want to go? And uh, one of the things they encourage people to do is to dig down. I knew that going in because I knew some of the people who had worked on the installation, so I'd already in it, had an advanced tip that I should do this. So I walked into an office, the detective's office, and I looked at everything on the walls, and then I sat down at the desk, and I was curious, what's in the desk? And I felt like a voyeur, I felt a little bit like a thief, but that was great, the transgression. Then um, I opened a drawer, I found a box. I opened the box. I found a wallet. Keep deeper, deeper, deeper. And I opened the wallet, and in the wallet were pieces of paper on which were listed all of the birds in the play Macbeth. <laughs> so I was deeply rewarded for continuing to dig, dig. So this piece, by its very nature, the nature of its construction, the nature of its conception, is bringing the audience to a place that they're resisting commodification. They're not going to leave this performance with the ability to describe it in a way that they can put it into a box and then forget about it. In fact, no one who sees it sees the same play. <laughs> and, and afterwards, the people who have seen it say, did you see that thing? No, I didn't see that. Where was that? And <laughs> these are ways in which form uh, asks questions. Now, uh, so that's, that's one of my favorite questions. My, one of my favorite approaches to writing a play. Another uh, approach would be, this is a craft approach. This is, I call it the yin-yang of character and plot. You can approach a play through its characters or through its plot. Now, setting, setting aside for a moment the question of, of plot, in experimental theater, there's often no plot. Experimental theater explodes plot, fragments it. But uh, this is another way to... There's all sorts of ways to experiment. You can even experiment with classic plot. So, uh, first to get to character, you can invent your character in so many ways. First, just you could start with visual material. Collect as many photographs and classic paintings as you can of, of portraits of people. Spread them all out. Figure out the one that you're most drawn to. That says a lot about your impulse. 
making choices, figuring out what you're drawn to is one of the most important things to write a play. Then you concoct a, a name for this character. And then you ask yourself, uh, what are three decisive actions this person has made? This is key because character is defined by choice. We are, it goes back to Aristotle, uh, we are what we do. So, um, um, I, it's crucial that every writer understands that uh, he or she or them has an obligation to the present moment. That's what we do. We channel the zeitgeist, the spirit of the time. And we have a responsibility to social justice. We, our job is to change lives. And we do that by shaping the nature of the narrative in the community. And people will say, well, theater doesn't have the power uh, to make change. Ah, but it does. Now, for example, Harriet Beecher Stowe wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin. Uncle Tom's Cabin was turned into several different plays. Three million people would have seen Uncle Tom's Cabin between 1852 and the start of the Civil War. And when Lincoln met Harriet Beecher Stowe, he said to her, ah, you're the little lady who started this great war. So there's a lag time between the impulse that goes into the culture as a narrative and when it affects social change. So, you know, fast forwarding, it takes decades and decades of narratives to get to the point where Thurgood Marshall takes Brown versus Education to Supreme Court and then Dwight Eisenhower sends the troops into Little Rock to integrate. It's taken decades of narratives shaping. Uh, fascinating. And when I was a kid, the idea that same-sex marriage would become the law of the land in the United States was as crazy to me, would have been as crazy to me as if the Martians had landed. And yet, you look at the at the incident of <clears throat> of plays in which gay characters are forward, like Charles Ludlam's Ridiculous Theater Company, uh, or Jeff Weiss's work, um, and then that goes into the beginning of the profusion of gay characters, the first gay character on, on television in a sitcom, uh, Lanford Wilson's Hot El Baltimore, Norman Lear turned that into a television series. Billy Crystal, uh, the first gay character on television. Uh, Philadelphia with Tom Hanks and Denzel Washington winning three Oscars. This begins to create, a, and then we're at Tony Kushner's 1992 Angels in America which is a beautiful juxtaposition of convention, traditional and experimental writing because we have uh, angels falling through a roof, uh, through a ceiling. We've got prophets speaking. So he's, Tony is dilating wildly, but sticking with a, con, a narrative, traditional narrative. Uh, that play at the moment, Angels in America, is being done all over the country. It's suddenly quite topical again given uh, the new American administration. So uh, theater makes social change, but it does it in a ripple effect. That's why uh, we need to be conscious that our personal questions uh, are connected to the community in which we live, and that when we're trying to choose uh, the play we'll write or the questions that we're seeking to turn into a play, we need to be generous and understand that our personal questions, they need to also affect our neighbors and our community.